allotment, he said, yeah, within a certain uh, period of time. I said, why is that? Apparently, they're afraid that I might be making methamphetamine out of it, which is funny to me, because I can buy as much meth as I want. <laughs> Like, Mikey's not even keeping track. He's just like, dude, come over. I got Xbox. It's going to be cool. So now I'm on Google trying to figure out how to turn methamphetamine back into Sudafed. <laughs> Anyone has any tips? I know you're a big science bunch. Uh, I just celebrated my five-year anniversary with my wife. Oh. We, we were already together for 14 years when we got married, which means that I've been uh, in a monogamous, heterosexual relationship for 19 years, which leads some people to believe that I'm kind of boring. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little vanilla between the sheets. But it ain't true. I'm here to tell you, I'm kinky. My trip is, I really want to bang an old lady. And I'm very patient. <laughs> you see, it's actually kind of a sweet joke once you get it. It's the most romantic way you'll ever hear anyone say, I want to bang an old lady. <laughs> and you're welcome. Uh, I've been writing suicide notes lately. <sighs> Why is there always some asshole that giggles at that part? That's... Don't worry about me, I'm fine. Um, I'm not feeling depressed. Sorry to disappoint you, gigglers. Uh, I just think it's an underappreciated art form, and so I thought I'd take a stab at it. My, my favorite that I've come up with so far goes, goodbye. I'm taking all, or you can have my records, but I'm taking all my pills. Kisses, Keith. It's much funnier when I don't fuck up the beginning of it, and I promise. I'm also working on a country western song. I just had the title so far. It's her safe word was goodbye. <laughs> I have a new safe word myself, which is shut the fuck up, JT Eberhard. George Orwell in 1984 predicted in the future that we would speak in this highly efficient new speak. When I read that and look at where we've arrived, <laughs> so stupid, I just LMAO, you know what I mean? <laughs> just, just lols. Um, all right, this is a new one I'm working on. Uh, this is my impersonation of almost every conversation I've had with men about women since I've been 15 years old. Dude, fucking bitches just don't ever want to give me no pussy. Oh? Uh, why do you suppose that is? Because I'm too fucking nice. I try to be a good friend. I try to be supportive. I have a friend. Uh, I went to him and I said, hey, listen. You can come out of the closet. I want you to know that we're, we're there for you. We love you. We're going to love you no matter what. It makes no difference to us. So it's safe. And I, and I want to be there for you as your friend. And he said, that's really nice, Keith, except I'm not in the closet. And I said, oh, OK. It's not time yet. I get it. That's cool. <laughs> and he said, no, I'm really not in the closet. And I said, dude, you're so far in the closet. You're like past the lamppost and halfway to the White Witch's castle. And he gave me a look that let me know that that was pretty much the gayest way anyone has ever called anybody else gay. <laughs> so we joined hands and we hopped out together. It's beautiful. If I was a lady, I would say things like, God damn, my period's so heavy, it's an exclamation point. <laughs> uh. I think I'd make a pretty good lady. 
When my wife asks me to go to the store and buy her feminine hygiene products, I don't make a big fuss about it. I don't giggle and act like a stupid little boy. I tell her, of course I'll do that, dear, because I'm a mature man. And I understand that that's something that you need. And at the time that you need that, you don't really feel like going out. I get that. And I just keep talking like this for a long time because I really don't want to go buy those fucking things. <laughs> but eventually I run out of words. And I walk across the park to the little store by my house. And as I'm getting ready to go in the store, I'm thinking, oh God, cute girls don't be there, cute girls don't be there. Because there's three really cute girls that work there and I don't want to buy those products from them. And I open the door and I hear Iron Maiden blasting and I go, yes, heavy metal dude's working by himself today. Awesome. Run to the hills indeed. <laughs> this is great. Thank you. <laughs> That's for one person always. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm a Maiden fan. But I go over and I, I grab the products that she needs and then I also grab a Coke and a chocolate bar as cover. Like, surely he won't notice what's in between these two delightful sugary treats. And I slide him up on the counter, and Heavy Metal Dude doesn't even look up. He just keeps rocking, rings him in, throws him in the bag, rings him in, throws him in the bag, tells me how much money I owe him. I pay up. He gives me my stuff. And as I start walking out the door, he says the only words that he said to me during the entire exchange, you bleeding, Keith? <laughs> I said, like a stuck pig I am, sir. <laughs> and I headed home, and my wife thought, very intuitive you, of you to realize I could use a Coke and a chocolate bar as well. You are a good <laughs> husband. <laughs> so uh, my father sucked at talking about sex. And I have three older brothers. My mom gave them the sex talk, and there were books and charts and diagrams and lots of embarrassment. I got... Hey, Keith, you know about sex, right? Yeah, Dad. All right. Hey, if you got any questions, you know, don't fucking ask you. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> We're good. So my mom went out of town, and it was just me, my dad, and my little brother alone in the house. And my little brother comes out with a box of maxi pads. And he says, hey, Dad, what are these? Yeah, Dad, what are those? <laughs> You're on. My dad said, oh, those, uh, those are Band-Aids for women. <laughs> His little brother accepted that answer and went out to skateboard. I guess he ate shit, though. So a little while later, I saw him walking out again with his skateboard back under his arm. And maxi pads just stuck all over his legs. <laughs> so I kicked my dad. <laughs> what is this? My dad looks, what the fuck are you doing? My little brother turns around, what? We were all out of dude band-aids. <laughs> You're on, dad. My dad thought about it for a second and said, yeah, all right. <laughs> and sent him out to get tough. It worked. <laughs> I, uh, you accept a lot of different shows. When you, when you need stage time, you need stage time. And I, I often will accept these shows that I don't like doing. I don't know if they have them here. They're called dirty shows. And everybody just comes and they try to be as filthy and disgusting as possible. And every comic just has a whole litany of rape jokes and Hitler jokes. And I just wanted to work on my set. So I go and I'm sitting through all these rape jokes and I thought, shit, I don't have a rape joke or a Hitler joke. I don't know what to do. So then I got up there and I said, well, why when people have a chance to go back in time, do they always go back and kill Hitler? Couldn't they go back a little further and just cock block his dad? <laughs> Stop the violence and time travel, people. Go have sex with Hitler's mom. <laughs> you make the world a better place and you get to have sex with a cute Jewish girl. That is an anti-Semitic joke aimed at Hitler. You're welcome. <laughs> Didn't think you were gonna hear that tonight. All right, we'll try a rape joke and see how I do with this. If you're not 
completely and totally sure that there is consent, then just don't do it. You can fuck later. It's not, not having sex right this minute is not going to kill you or make you a rapist. <laughs> it needs work, it needs work. But you liked it more than the people at the Dirty Show. They didn't, they didn't like it at all. So my life peaked early. Uh, when I was in fourth grade, I was out at lunch, and a sixth grader was being a dick. He had pebbles, and he was throwing them at the seagulls that hung out over our lunch area. And then he hit one of them. Boom, and the seagull made a noise I never heard a seagull make before. It made a sad little noise. Me, And I felt horrible. And the sixth grader went, yeah, got one, and went to get a celebratory high five from his buddy. At which point, a bird shit in his hand. <laughs> and I went, that's the greatest thing that ever happened. This is why the Big Bang and everything else. Wow. So great. I saw documentaries about astronauts that would go to the moon and when they would come back, they'd have a special kind of depression because how does anything else compare to walking on the moon? And I saw that and I was like, I know how you feel, brother. I can relate. I watched my daughter be born. I watched my wife say, I do. Those things were pretty cool. <laughs> I once lived above a gay bar, and there was another gay bar across the street. And the gay bar I lived above was open until four in the morning as an after hours club. And I once looked out the window at three o'clock in the morning to see a drag queen crossing the street, thinking she was by herself. She lifted her skirt to pop her testicles back into her panties. And I thought, I got to witness that. <laughs> I was there for that. That was a special moment, but it still can't compare to watching some sixth grader get a much deserved shit five from a bird. <laughs> um, I'm using notes mostly because I don't want to repeat material on you guys from before. Um, we'll get into some atheist stuff here. People, th there's that question that we're also tired of, why are atheists so angry? Uh, people ask that question, and what I decided to do was to come up with a list of things that religious people tried to take from me. This is a small list of things that made me happy as a young person that religious people tried to take from me. Star Wars. That's some fighting shit right there. Oh, they practice the Force. It's witchcraft. And uh, later generation Harry Potter fans, I feel ya. Marbles. Marbles, they called it gambling. <laughs> comic books. True. I was doing to those comic books what they thought I was doing to those comic books, but still, it made me happy. And I didn't go blind, so. <laughs> Heavy metal music. Or hip hop. Or techno. Or any other decent kind of music ever. They really have contributed nothing since gospel. No wonder they're fucking jealous. Uh, for the older folks like myself in the audience, Benny Hill? Yeah. <laughs> Funny story. My mom wouldn't let me watch Benny Hill. It was eroding my morals. Went to Pennsylvania to visit Grandpa John who uh, the adults went out to dinner and I was going to be alone in the house and he said, be good, behave in my house. And look under the TV. <laughs> Piles of VHS tapes. He had taped every episode. <laughs> Big old Benny Hill fest. Breakdancing. Tried to take that from us. Dungeons and Dragons. They tried to talk my parents into taking that away from us. And my parents said, you mean the one time a day when they fucking sit still and are quiet? Go to hell. <laughs> 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 
And last on the list, my penis. They actually got a piece of that, and I've always known they wanted the rest of it. <laughs> Gotta watch out for them. Knock, knock. A truther. A truther who? A truther who? A truther who? Okay, fine. You're just going to accept what you're told that somebody knocked on the door, right? In this day and age, when everybody has screen doors and doorbells, you're just going to buy the official media report that someone knocked on the door. But answer me this. Why is it that in the first 10 minutes after the story broke, there was news of a second knocker, and all of a sudden, no one's mentioning the second knocker? Where did he go? Just fucking vanish? And how come nobody heard any knocking to the left or to the right of the original door that was knocked on? So just go ahead and put on your blindfolds, you little fucking sheeple, and believe whatever you want to believe. But I'll tell you what, they're going to be knocking on your goddamn door next. Are you going to answer? <laughs> oh, thanks. That one's new. It's, it's fun to get to yell. Man, false flag, what the fuck? Everyone missed out on the betting pool on that one. We were just setting up the pool on how quickly Alex Jones would respond to the bombings. We were just getting the pool together. He'll respond by tonight. What? He responded already? I have a new conspiracy theory. I think that motherfucker was in on it because he had that shit ready a little too quick. I think that maybe he's on the side of the banks and all the people that really are fucking our country over, uh, and he's providing a whole bunch of distractions to the most passionate but unfortunately dumb among us. <laughs> That's right, I'm an Alex Jones truther. <laughs> Keith, do you have any evidence to support these accusations? That's not the way it fucking works. <laughs> I didn't make those rules. I just follow them. So, uh, so I have a daughter. I have a beautiful little girl, and uh, I don't hit her. <laughs> People cheer for it, and it's a controversial thing, and there's actually talk about it, and I, I don't understand how it's controversial. It was an easy decision for me. Oh, she's adorable. You want to hit her? <laughs> no. <laughs> Parenting's easy. <laughs> Is it all going to be this simple? Uh, but I actually get grief from friends who are like, you don't hit her? Seriously, you don't hit her? Dude. Bro, you got to hit her. We got hit when we were kids. Don't you remember, bro? Don't you remember we got hit? Then I have to have that awkward conversation where I explain to them that we are not what I'm aiming for. <laughs> like at all. <laughs> hey, gobbled up that hippopotamus. I was like, I'm not sure that's the way I wanted to solve that problem. So my daughter has three grandmas. She's lucky that way. She has three grandmas because grandpa doesn't know how to behave himself. And they expected a normal little girl, <laughs> which they know me. They had no right to expect that. Uh, but they buy her baby dolls. And tigers don't give a shit for baby dolls. Baby dolls sit on the bed and look pretty. Until one day, I see my daughter walking down the hall, dragging a box behind her with all three baby dolls in it. I said, great, sweetheart. You're playing with your baby dolls. And as she throws them up onto the couch, she turns over her shoulder and says, tiger food, dad. <laughs> well, shit, tiger's got to eat. <laughs> so I did what any responsible parent in 2013 does. I went and I grabbed my iPad and I started recording her. Because <laughs> I need the YouTube hits. <laughs> and she took a baby doll and she threw it in a filing cabinet drawer and shut the drawer. And I said, what are you doing, sweetheart? And she said, it's an oven, daddy. <laughs> you gotta cook them. <laughs> oh, right, of course. You know, sweetheart, I was just curious. <laughs> how, uh, how long do you cook a baby doll? <laughs> and my sweet little girl looked at me and said, oh, about two hours, or until they stop squirming. <laughs> Top of the food chain. 
I don't tell her traditional bedtime stories either, because I think a lot of them are sexist, and I don't want her sitting around waiting for some douchebag to come save her. <laughs> there should be more bedtime stories for girls where they take care of the shit themselves. <laughs> Douchebag's lucky if they talk to him. Oh, by the way, as long as I'm being preachy, advice uh, that I hope all young women learn is don't trust clubs and bars when they say it's ladies' night. Because that's bullshit. What they're really saying is, hey, girls, come be bait. We're fishing for douchebags. And we want to use you to bring them in. Uh, so I won't read her traditional bedtime stories. What I do is I, I just tell her movies that she's not old enough to watch yet. And I edit them down for her. Like, we've done the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy. It was awesome. And then I broke into the Star Wars movies, skipping the prequels because they're shit and uh, diving right in, and uh, she immediately fixates on Princess Leia. Why wouldn't she? Princess Leia is a badass. And my daughter starts saying, I'm Princess Leia. I'm Princess Leia. I said, good for you, sweetheart. You're Princess Leia. And then she points at me and says, and you're Princess Leia's daddy. <laughs> to which I said, <laughs> Uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> you're never going to believe this, but Princess Leia's daddy is actually Darth Vader. And she said, ha, 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 a bad guy, daddy. <laughs> That's flattering. <laughs> she thinks highly of me. Oh. <laughs> but uh, then I slip into my... Darth Vader voice, and I say to her, Leia, do you want to join the dark side? Do you want to be a bad guy? And she says, uh, no, daddy, because I'm a girl, <laughs> and we're good. And then I said, you can blow up planets. <laughs> To which she said, okay, <laughs> I'm in. It was easy. Like, oh shit, I didn't have to cut off her hand or nothing. <laughs> like Darth Vader went after the wrong kid. If he'd gone for the daughter, those movies could have ended totally differently. <laughs> Little flaming Ewoks flying everywhere. Would have been badass. People hear these stories and they say, do you worry about her? Worry about her, worry about her, worry about her taking over the world. The kid's got an awesome imagination. No, I don't worry about her. In fact, I just go ahead and brag more. I tell him I walked in the kitchen the other morning and I said, how you doing, sweetheart? And she turned to me and said, daddy, I wish I had tongues on the bottom of my feet. <laughs> I said, why is that, sweetheart? She said, so I could kick things and taste them. I wrote, write new material off my list, and I went back to bed, because I wasn't going to top that. <laughs> no way, no how. So people ask me if I worry about her. I say, no, I don't worry about her. And whatever she grows up to be, I'm going to be proud of her. I don't care what it is. I'm going to be proud of her. Oh, what if she grows up to be a serial killer? I will be very proud of her. There's not that many female serial killers. <laughs> And I can just picture myself many years from now bragging. Oh, excuse me. That's actually uh, 17 known victims. <laughs> My baby girl. <laughs> I'm her daddy. Um, yeah, I haven't done this one in a while. Uh, I, I talk a little bit about why I first sort of came out as an atheist. Uh, and, and it had to do with the September 11th attacks, um, or more specifically, the horrendous emails that I got from loved ones after the September 11th attacks. Uh, loved ones who, at the very least, if they knew I was an atheist, would keep their horrible shit to themselves. <laughs> and I got an email, and it showed the, the carnage of that day, and the horrible smoke-filled skies, and in beautiful, gold, Disney-esque writing, it said, now 
Would you allow prayer in our schools? And my head exploded. And my first thought was, wait a minute. Didn't the motherfuckers who did this get a little too much prayer in their schools? Isn't that more problem than solution? But then I looked at it more and I thought, shit, that kind of sounds like a threat, doesn't it? Now, will you allow prayer in our school? Or do we have to really get nasty? <laughs> oh, man, that's not cool. So I opened up Photoshop. And if you believe in any kind of hell whatsoever, whichever one you believe in, I'm going. <laughs> and my top 10 sins mostly start with, so I opened up Photoshop. <laughs> And I changed the text and sent it off to my neighbor right away, reading, Now, will you turn off that goddamn car alarm? <laughs> I was on a podcast recently, and another comedian asked me, uh, we, we were arguing about the role of feminism within atheism, and... Uh, he asked me, well, what are you, more feminist or atheist? <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I 0% believe in God and 100% believe in equality. I suck at math, you tell me. <laughs> Figure that one out for me. I, uh, I went to my friend Uray's house and I saw his dog tags hanging in his room. And uh, I looked at him and they said Buddhist on him and it was spelled completely wrong. <laughs> He grew up in Texas. <laughs> and I said, hey, Yo Ray, uh, I didn't know you were ever a Buddhist. Oh, fuck, man, I wasn't a Buddhist. <laughs> your, your dog tags say Buddhist on them. Oh, shit, yeah, man, you don't put atheist on your dog tags. <laughs> I said, oh, why not? <laughs> don't you want him to know we're in foxholes? <laughs> and he said, no, man. He said, every Sunday, all the Christian soldiers had to go to service. And they made the atheists go run laps out in the hot sun the whole time. Oh, shit. That's awful. I said, so the atheists had it the worst in the military, huh? He said, no, no. Not at all. The Jews, they had to go to service on Saturday. And on Sunday, they had to go out and run with the fucking atheists. <laughs> I said, oh shit, man, what'd they do with the Buddhists? Fuck, they didn't know what the fuck to do with me in Texas. They never heard of a Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> I said, how'd it work out? He said, I told him I needed to meditate and went back to my bed and read comic books. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people like to talk about different religions. Uh, cause that's fun. Um, so in Hinduism, and we were talking about Hinduism and, and morality here a little bit earlier, there's a, there's a wheel of Dharma that we're all on. And, uh, if you lead a good life, you may come back in uh, your next life a little bit higher up as something better. It's starting to sound more like a ladder to me than a wheel, but that's what they say. <laughs> uh, but if you don't lead a good life, um, you might come back as something worse, like, I don't know, maybe a uh, cockroach. And I said, wait a minute. So cockroaches are on the fucking wheel? How does a cockroach be the good cockroach? <laughs> like, I'm having trouble picturing that. It started troubling me. Like, when I turned on the light in the kitchen and they all scattered, that one that just stayed in the middle of the floor that I thought was sick or a dumbass... <laughs> Should I be approaching that little cockroach with reverence? Is that the one that's moving up? <laughs> Namaste, little cockroach. <laughs> Please enjoy being a dolphin. <laughs> hey? Oh, fuck, you're not one of the fucking dolphin people, are you? God damn, that joke always gets me in trouble with the dolphin people. They'll come up to me after a show with dolphins. 
on their necklaces and in their earrings, usually some rhinestone jewelry as well. Uh, excuse me, did you just suggest that uh, dolphins were just above cockroaches? Because dolphins are above people. <laughs> Fucking dolphin people. <laughs> uh, I, I've had a few run-ins with Scientologists. Uh, I went, I, yeah, I live, I live in a city, so we've got, we've got one of their uh, Christian science crazy little personality test storefront places. And I'm out walking, uh, doing some underage drinking with a friend of mine. <laughs> and uh, we come across a guy who says, you want a free personality test? And we're like, shit, yeah. <laughs> that sounds awesome. So he brings us inside. And he tells me, hey, your friend has uh, apparently been drinking, so he won't be able to take it. And I was like, oh, fucking drunk. <laughs> Good thing I'm sober. <laughs> Let's go do this. Once again, proud of my ability to maintain. <laughs> so I go in the room, and they send my friend into another room to watch movies. And I go in, and uh, they ask me a bunch of questions while I'm holding these two weird things, and a needle's bouncing around. And at the end of it, the guy holds it up to me and it looks like this. And he says, you see that? And I go, yeah, that looks cool. <laughs> That's me? Awesome. And he goes, yeah, but you've, you've got these highs and you've got these really bad lows. I could help you fix that. And I said, don't you dare. And he said, no, we could even it out. And I said, I've seen what you're describing, my friend. They call that a flat line. That's fucking death. So we kept going at it, and he got frustrated with me. So we go in the other room to get my drunk friend. And he gets up, and we leave together. And as we get about a block away from the place, he pulls up his sweatshirt and goes, check it out, dude. He stole a copy of Dianetics <laughs> off of the piano. He was so descriptive about how he did it. He's like, there were five of them. I took one and I changed the spacing on the other ones. I'm like, fuck, you are a master criminal, sir. That is amazing. We went back to our apartment and we drank some more and we passed out. And then we woke up and I've woken up with some weird shit <laughs> before, trying to figure out what happened the night before. But when you wake up with your best friend and there's a copy of Dianetics between you, <laughs> like, oh shit, we joined a cult. <laughs> <laughs> We're so fucked. <laughs> we pieced it together. We're like, wait, they're not going to steal all our money. We don't have any. <laughs> so we grabbed the book and we went to this uh, local used bookstore. And uh, he walked up to the counter and he goes, hey, uh, you want to buy this copy of... Uh, and before even hearing the rest of what he had to say, the owner of the bookstore, who did not look up from his morning paper, went like this. And we followed his hand up. <laughs> and above the door of the bookstore was a shelf. And on that shelf were as many copies of Dianetics as could fit. And a sign with one word on it. No. <laughs> we were just going to buy more beer anyway. <laughs> I've had very little experience with Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, yeah, they don't come to my door. They heard about me. <laughs> Um, but I did, there were two little blonde girls, both named Jenny, who I went to elementary school with. And the Jennies always kind of creeped me out. But on my birthday, I wanted to share my joy with them anyway. And I went bouncing up to them and I said, it's my birthday, it's my birthday. And they said, we're Jehovah's Witnesses. We don't need birthdays. We're special every day. And I was sad because they went up to me. And I said, oh shit, for real? Like, you get presents and cake and ice cream every day? And they said, no. And I went, ha ha, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. And that religion then didn't stand a chance. <laughs> my mom was not a censor. Uh, she would let me read just about anything that I wanted to read. The one time that she didn't want to allow a book into the house is because it was a book of Mormon. And it was given to me by a really, really cute girl named Nancy. <laughs> and my mom said, that's not fighting fair, Mormons. <laughs> Forget about it. I had to sneak that one into my backpack. 
Uh, Buddhism's fun. I kind of think of the Buddhism as like the marijuana of religions. Like it's pretty mellow. They have some luck alleviating pain. Uh, I don't think it makes you real productive. <laughs> Just saying like Thomas Edison did a lot of shit in his life. And if you know Thomas Edison's story, he had huge anxiety attacks. He used to tear his own hair out of his head. It was a danger to himself at times. He probably could have used a little bit of Buddhism. I can just imagine if Thomas Edison would have gone and sat under a lotus tree for a while and meditated. I bet that guy would have written some kick-ass haiku. <laughs> and we would not be able to read it at night. <laughs> Thomas Edison didn't actually invent the light bulb. Shut up, atheists! <laughs> at the very least, he had something to do with marketing it, okay? I hope reincarnation is not real. I just hate the thought of some future generation looking back and having to realize they were just us. No offense. <laughs> when I did, uh, we did a tour called the Coexist Comedy Tour and we had all these different religions and we all toured together, myself and a Hindu, a Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, whoever I didn't already name. <laughs> and uh, people used to say, uh, uh, why don't you have a Baha'i? Why don't you have a Baha'i? And the Baha'i are the people that say many paths, one God. Which is really insulting to monotheists and us. <laughs> it's like, everyone's right, except for you two fuckers. <laughs> and uh, the truth is, we did have, we did have a Baha'i in the troop. It's just he never made it to the shows on time, because I would give him fucked up directions. <laughs> and I go, Keith, uh, bad directions again. And I would say, many paths, one comedy club. <laughs> How's it working out for you? <laughs> Sacramento to San Francisco via St. Louis. <laughs> it works. Um, and then uh, people ask me why I don't do uh, more Wiccan stuff. Uh, I don't really consider Wicca a religion any more than I consider Hot Topic a church. Oh. And the Wiccans and the Pagans, because they're downtrodden a lot, and I do have a lot of, a lot of friends that, that claim both because they make cool jewelry, uh, they're the ones that seem the most eager to want to wanna kinda connect with us and relate to us, and they'd always come up to me after shows, and they'd be like, man, you really give it to religion, man. You really do away with all that superstitious nonsense. And I'd be like, oh, cool, thanks. Hey, my coven is uh, meeting up. If you want to come by, we're going to cast a few spells. And she, oh, I, I'm going to skip. <laughs> uh, Keith, why don't you do any Jewish jokes in your act? You seem to let the Jews off the hook. Why don't you give it to the Jews? Uh, well, I'll, I'll answer that question in Jewish tradition with a question. Uh, what part of I want a career in show business do you not understand? <laughs> Sir, I'd like to give you my card <laughs> before we <laughs> get in touch with me. I can be in L.A. in a drop of a hat. I don't live too far away. I appreciate it. You got him on speed dial? Speed dial. That's a thing we used to have. <laughs> God, there's all these words I have to keep purging from my vocabulary. Um, so, I... Uh, I went to the little town of Modesto. <laughs> You're in fucking Kansas. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but I always say yes to gigs in Modesto because my in-laws live there. So I pack up the family and we take a trip to Modesto and I perform. And the next day, my mom-in-law says, hey, Keith, hey, Keith, you want to go to the, the big dog park grand opening? And I said, shit, yeah, I do. Because there's dick else to do in Modesto. <laughs> so we went to the dog park, big grand opening. And uh, it was wild. I had my little girl on my hip. And when dogs are having a dog party in those kind of numbers, they just 
travel in waves. They'll knock you over. And there were so many dogs there. Like, I swear, people rented dogs not to miss the big social event of the century. Like, if you went to the dog rental place, they'd be like, sorry, we're wiped out. We got a one three-legged chihuahua in the back thinks he's a cat. You want? <laughs> Meow! So me and my daughter are standing there. We're watching the dog party. We're having a good time, and we're laughing. And all of a sudden, this big dog comes up right in front of us, and it stops, and it takes a shit. And her and I, we stopped and we watched. Because that kind of stuff is fascinating when you're three, uh, or me. <laughs> and uh, the second the shit hit the ground, and I mean the second it hit the ground, this little dog from the other side of the park comes running over. I'm sorry, it's what they do. Gobbles it right up. I'm just reporting the facts, folks. It keeps running. And me and my daughter, of course, burst out laughing. It was just so shocking. It was just out of the blue. Like, the dude that owned the big dog was down there ready to clean up with the inside-out baggie on his hand. Then all of a sudden, uh, thank you! <laughs> Dog's a hero! <laughs> and uh, we start laughing. And when you're a precocious three-and-a-half-year-old and something's funny, you just have to keep repeating what it was that was funny. So she keeps going, Daddy, Daddy, that dog ate that dog. He's poop, Daddy. And she's a little narc, too, because she keeps pointing out which dog it is. <laughs> that doggy right there, Daddy. That doggy right there ate that dog. He's poop, Daddy. And now I'm crying, laughing. I've got tears streaming down my face. I'm thinking, man, I study comedy. Like, I perform comedy almost every night. And I will never be as funny as that little shit-eating dog. <laughs> like, he has bested me. But there's a woman standing nearby, and I guess she doesn't approve of this kind of father-daughter bonding. <laughs> so she leans over and she goes, um, excuse me, but uh, that's disgusting. And I said, no, not really. Because if you think about it, that little dog was totally within the five-second rule. <laughs> and I thought, man, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Maybe I could open for that little dog in Vegas. <laughs> Keith Old Jensen and the shit-eating dog. Coming soon to a town near you. See, I'm doing on time. We got off to kind of a weird start here. Um, okay, so you guys like stories about uh, dogs eating poop, and that's cool. I got more. <laughs> that's, I didn't know that was going to be your thing, but it's cool. I, I aim to please. Because uh, I, uh, I worked at Petco, <laughs> and I, I knew a lot about uh, animal nutrition and about how to set up and break down aquariums and a lot of other stuff. I was going to help because pets, that's a magical part of your life. That's a pretty incredible thing when you have that kind of connection with animals. Uh, I think it's one of the things that keeps us sane. And so I was very happy to work there where I help people with their pets, except all anyone ever wanted to know was how on earth do you stop a Labrador retriever from eating cat shit? <laughs> that was the question we got day in and day out. They love it. They'll eat it right out of the box. What do you do? And people would wait a while to ask. They'd try to figure it out on their own because uh, they're embarrassed. And then finally they'd come in and they'd be like, hey, my dog's kind of weird. <laughs> He's got this thing. And I'd say, oh, it's no problem. It's no problem. Uh, there's actually a pill right here that'll fix everything because there is. There's just a nice, simple pill that stops your dog from eating cat shit. Good news, right? That was worth the price of admission right there. Here's the thing that's amazing about this pill. You don't feed it to your dog. You feed it to your cat. It somehow makes their shit not taste quite so good. <laughs> what the hell's in that pill? <laughs> Is this like concentrated Olive Garden or what? <laughs> you know? Like this is a weird thing. Does the government know about this pill? <laughs> And, uh, 
And it made me feel better about the decisions I'd made in life because I didn't feel like a big success being the assistant manager of a pet co wasn't what I'd aspired to in life. But I knew that there was some other schmo out there who worked harder than I did in high school, actually finished it. <laughs> uh, stay in school, kids. Uh, went off to college, worked really hard, took his chemistry classes, got a job at Dow Chemical, and it was that schmuck and not me who one day walked into his cubicle to find a little note on his uh, computer screen reading, make cat shit less delicious. <laughs> So I think I was actually doing okay. <laughs> we'll do another knock-knock joke for those of you who haven't heard this one yet, and then I'll tell you a little more about it too. Knock-knock. Uh, the atheist. Never mind. Never mind. We, I, uh, I forgot. We don't, we don't actually knock on your door and bother you when you're doing other things. <laughs> That's a... That's an oldie of mine from way back, but I, I told it a lot of times, and then um, a friend of mine called me, my friend Terry called me from San Luis Obispo, and he says, uh, hey dude, I met a chick at a bar last night, and she told me she was an atheist, I told her your knock-knock joke, and she went home with me. I was like, oh, crazy. My joke got you laid. Like, it's never done that for me. <laughs> Maybe it could. So I went to my wife. I said, hey, sweetie, uh, one of my jokes got Terry laid. <laughs> and she goes, oh, awesome, good for Terry. Guy kind of needed to get laid. <laughs> and she goes back to eBay. <laughs> and I thought, okay, that was too subtle. Because <laughs> that was me trying to be sexy. You sort of lose touch with it as you get older. <laughs> so I said, all right, all right, uh, <laughs> sweetie, sweetie. And she said, yeah. And I said, Knock, knock. And she said, Who, who's there? Because being married to a comedian is awesome. And I said, the atheist. And she said, yeah, I already know this one. And she went back to eBay and she scored this really cool pair of cufflinks. They were vintage. Bummed me out so much, even killed my plan B masturbation. Oh. So I got, a, I got a knock at my door, and uh, it was like cartoon o'clock in the morning. So I knew it wasn't one of my friends. I was like, oh man, I thought I was on all the blacklists. <laughs> I went and I looked, through the, I looked through the little hole, and it was a Catholic priest standing out on my doorstep. And I thought, well, that's pretty crazy. Like, I haven't seen them coming door to door before when the Vatican is taking tips from Salt Lake City. Shit is upside down, <laughs> you know? That's wild. So I opened the door and I said, oh, good morning. What can I do for you, Padre? And it wasn't what I was thinking at all. It just turns out that now there's this law where they have to let you know when they've moved into your neighborhood. <laughs> Cool, cool. I didn't hear any groans. Usually I get groans even within an atheist crowd on that one, which just amazes me. <laughs> like, seriously? That's a sacred cow? <laughs> that evil institution? Well, come on now. Not all of them fucked kids. <laughs> yeah, what kind of defense is that? <laughs> like, what are you going to use next? They didn't even fuck all the kids. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just... How about for Lent? You give up supporting those bastards. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Oh. I'm going to tease you guys a little bit. I, I, have, I have one that has just been killing me uh, this whole time up here because I know it would just floor the place I'd really like to tell you, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Just because I'm a dick. <laughs> uh, no, because I'm performing tomorrow with uh, Greta Christina, and we're doing the uh, Godless Perverts Story Hour. Thank you, sir. Um, it's mostly just me and Greta C Christina. There's some other people, but who cares? <laughs> right, sir? <laughs> oh, David Fitzgerald's going to be there. Who else? Who else, David? Uh, Amanda Brown. Oh, yeah, Amanda Brown? Cool, cool. What, say Bridget's last name again? 
Bridget Cadet? Cadet. Okay, cool, cool. And me. And uh, so, yeah, come to that and I'll tell a really filthy joke. Don't bring your kids. All right. Um, you know, I, I could close with this. I don't know if it would be a great closer or not, but uh, it's one for my Jew. <laughs> <laughs> there is the question of why uh, you guys have had such a hard time historically, why people have picked on you guys so much. And um, I think what it is is that you don't knock on our doors. Because everyone says, I hate that. I hate when they knock on my door. Oh, yeah? Is that why you spent so much time planning how you're going to respond? <laughs> like, I got this bucket of blood, and I dump it on myself, and I answer the door, and I've got a pentagram drawn on my chest. God, just waiting. I have it ready every Sunday, but they haven't come back in a while. You know, <laughs> like, no, you fucking love it. Because when someone knocks on your door, they ask you to join their religion, you get to be the pretty girl being asked to the dance. <laughs> you know, and you get to go, no, I don't want to go to your heaven. <laughs> but then you say that to a Jew, and the Jew says, yeah, that's okay. It's kind of exclusive. <laughs> we sort of got our own thing going. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> you bastard. It's so exclusive that even if your father is a Jew, it doesn't mean that you're in. Your mother has to be Jewish for you to be in. So if your father marries a shiksa and has you, I guess you could say he Jewed you out of Judaism. <laughs> I have CDs, so I'll be back there. Thank you guys so much. Good night. Uh, that's it for tonight. Um, we're headed to Chateau, which is at 24th in Iowa, if you're interested in drinking reasonably. Uh, so have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs>